So far, we learned how to install a Nextcloud instance, add a domain to it, and make it secure. And then we checked out some of the best Nextcloud applications. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is finally getting that data over from Google with the Nextcloud Google migration tool. Now, this is awesome. It's going to let you bring in all your calendar events, all your contacts, all your photos, everything on Google Drive with a click. Now, it's, it's not going to be just a single click. It's going to be a, a couple different clicks because we're going to have to go onto the Google Cloud dashboard and set up some things to get this all integrated properly. But we're going to do everything and show you everything you need to know in this video. Additionally, at the end of the video, we're going to do a quick tip on actually backing up and restoring your Nextcloud instance if you happen to have followed the first video and used the snap installation method. But before we do any of that, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video and that is Linode. Uh, Linode has been sponsoring these Nextcloud videos, one, because they're awesome, and two, Linode is a wonderful platform to actually use Nextcloud on. And not only can you use Nextcloud on it, you could do basically anything that you'd want to do on a Linux server instance whether that be game servers, hosting your WordPress websites, any other type of websites, your applications, media servers, the list goes on and on. Linode is the largest independent cloud service provider out there. And with that, they have data centers all over the world. So chances are you're gonna have one nearby and you're gonna have incredible up and download speeds. I know I do on my gigabit internet connection when I'm downloading things from one of my Linodes. I usually downloads in 10 at the low end to up to 50 megabytes per second, so that is wonderful. Overall, everything else about it has been great. I've been using it to uh, build a Minecraft server, and that has been a phenomenal experience. Uh, I've needed to use their support tickets a couple of different times, and each time they respond very quick, very helpful. Overall, they are a complete pleasure to work with. And speaking of, if you want to try out Linode for 60 days, you get a $100 credit. If you go ahead and use the link in the description or go ahead and go over to linode.com forward slash tech hut. So go claim your credit today and then you can follow the uh, other two uh, Nextcloud videos that I've done and then follow this one and get completely set up and move towards de googlifying google -fying your life. <laughs> So again, thank you to Linode. You guys are awesome. Thank you for sponsoring this video. With that said, what we're gonna do is jump onto a Nextcloud instance and link it up to Google. Now at this point, I'm assuming you already have the instance set up. I'm doing this with a domain connected to it with a certificate already enabled. So if you haven't done any of those steps, I'd suggest you go watch the first video I did on actually installing it. And once you have everything set up and ready to go, you can now do this. So this is the Google account that I'm going to be demonstrating this with. You can see there's really not a lot going on. This is an older account, but I have some pictures here. If I go back, you can see I set up two test events in my Google Calendar. And then if I go back again, you can see I have a Google Drive with uh, quite a bit of older things in it. But I want to sync this over to Nextcloud. Now, like I said, this is a fresh install of Nextcloud, so you can see my pictures are just the default. If I go over to Contacts, for example, you're going to see I have nothing there. Go over to Calendar, you can see I have no events scheduled. So to go ahead and begin the process, what we're going to want to do is click on our little profile here, go under Applications, and then we're going to want to do a simple search for Google. So right here we have Google integration. I already had it downloaded once, but you could go ahead and click download and enable. For me, I'm just gonna go ahead and click enable. And then from here, you're gonna to want to click on your profile again and go over to settings. Now, when you're in settings, you're gonna to want to go to this panel over here under administration and go down to connected accounts. And then here is our Google integration page. And this is where we're gonna be inputting our client ID and secret ID a little bit later. But for now, what we're gonna to want to do is go to this Google IPA settings link here right click and open that up in a new tab. So now go over to that new tab. This is the Google Cloud Platform page. We're gonna to wanna to go ahead and create a project real quick. So from here, you're gonna to want to give it a project name. I'm just gonna call this uh, Nextcloud for now. And when you put in a project name, go ahead and click on Create. And now with our Nextcloud project created, we're just gonna go over here to the side, click on Credentials. And from here, click Create Credentials and we're gonna go with the zero auth client ID right here. Next, you're gonna to want to click Configure Consent Screen. And for the user type, you're gonna to want to select external. 
click Curate, and here is your app information. Basically, we're making one of these things that you see when you log into other services with your Google account, but you're creating this access for yourself. So you're gonna to wanna to give an app name. Again, you could call this really whatever you want. I'm gonna kind of match it with the domain name I'm using, which is Cloud Tut, which is just for demonstration purposes. I'm gonna do Cloud Tut Next Cloud. And now under user support email, just click this and add the email associated with your Google account. And then from here, scroll down to the bottom and we have our developer contact information. I'd recommend just putting that same email right here. And when that's done, we're gonna to want to go ahead and save and continue. And now when you're on the scopes page, you're just gonna to wanna to click save and continue. For test users, you're gonna to want to add a test user. And here, make sure you input the email that is associated with the Google account that you're gonna to want to be migrating over to Nextcloud click add, click add again, and then click save and continue. Now when you're on the summary page, you can just scroll down, click back to dashboard. And then from here, we're gonna to want to go over to credentials again, and then once more create credential, the zero auth client ID. And now from here, we're gonna go ahead and select a web application, go ahead and give it a name. I'm just gonna call this Nextcloud. And now what we're gonna to want to do is input an authorized redirect URL. And to get that, we're gonna to want to go over to our Google integration page under Nextcloud. And it says right here, make sure you set one authorized redirect URL to this. So we're gonna go ahead and give this a copy. Go back over to the Google Cloud platform, authorize URLs, we're gonna add it, paste, and then go ahead and create that. And now that our client has been created, we're gonna to want to go ahead and copy our ID and our secret key. So give that a copy, paste that in here. Go back, give that a copy and paste that in here. So now what we're gonna to want to do is add our libraries, that way that this can actually sync up properly with the various Google services. So to do that, we're gonna exit out of here, and while we're over in API and services, we're just gonna go ahead and click on library, and here is where we're gonna actually search for API and services. Now the first two we're gonna to want to add are the Google Drive and Calendar API. So to add them, you just go ahead and click on it, hit enable, and this may take it a couple seconds, but when it's done, it should refresh the page. There we go. And then when you do that, you're gonna to want to click the little hamburger menu right here, go under API and services, go to library, scroll down, and now let's go ahead and enable the Google Calendar API. Enable that. And now we have two more to enable, so go back over to library. And it's not gonna display on this page, so what we're gonna to want to do first is search for people. And then right here we have the Google People API. Go ahead and do this one, hit enable, and then we have one more. So go under library, this time we're gonna search for photos, and then we have the photos library API. Go ahead and enable that. And now everything should be set up that we should be able to go over to Nextcloud here and actually connect our Google account. So to do this, we're gonna to want to go back over to our settings page here and instead of going under administration we're going to go under personal and click on data migration don't update that and here we're going to go ahead and connect to google so when you go ahead and click on this it's going to ask you if you'd like to continue to whatever domain name is here make sure you choose the proper email address that you've been using this entire time to set up the account so give that a click. Now the application is not yet verified because you just made it, but you made it, so it should be safe. Let's click continue. And here you're giving your specific Nextcloud instance permission to do everything you see, including access your Google files, your contacts, your events, your photo libraries, etc. So we're just gonna to wanna to go ahead and click on allow. And you can see we have successfully connected our Google account. Uh, for some reason, it automatically started the Google Drive thing. If you don't want that, you could click cancel. Now, real quick, I just want to interject here. This test account I did a couple different times, so there were some issues with it because I created multiple APIs. But if you follow the instructions, you shouldn't have any issues. This right here is the window of the Nextcloud instance I use every day. And you can see the drive, the Google Photos, and everything, and this is set up correctly. But just know this demo account did have a couple issues that you shouldn't really experience unless if you end up doing this multiple times but that's also gonna go ahead and import our photos. But for example, let's go ahead and import our Google Contacts, import them into the Google Contacts import. There we go, 32 contacts successful. And now let's go ahead and import my calendar here. So if I go import calendar, you can see five events have been successfully imported. So now, for example, if I go over to calendar, 
you're gonna see these two test events that I originally set up in Google. Now here, it was taking a little while to get those uh, files into my Nextcloud instance. So here is what it looks like on my actual Nextcloud instance that I use on a daily basis. You can see all my photos in there organized properly. I have a bunch of different files that was imported from Google Drive. Overall, it is a awesome tool and it saved me a lot of time. And if you're somebody who is switching over to Nextcloud and you're not really using those Google services anymore, you can actually disconnect Google now that you have all your data in there. You don't need to keep it synced if you don't want to. That is completely up to you. And with that said, we're gonna move on to actually backing up and restoring your Nextcloud instance. Again, this is done with the Snap package, but overall it is a fairly simple process. Now, backing up and importing a Nextcloud instance that's installed through the Snap package is significantly easier than doing it with a manual installation. Easy enough, it is done with a simple command. We're just gonna to want to run sudo nextcloud.export. Now, instead of just running that, I do recommend opening up the help page because that's gonna give us some more information on the things that we can actually do. You can see that exporting data here is suitable for migrating servers. So for example, if you want to go from a local to Linode, vice versa, you could use this to do that. And by default, this will include the Nextcloud database configuration and the actual data that you're storing. Now, there are some additional options through selective backup, so you could add these tags to the end. So for example, if I only wanted to export my config, I would just go ahead and add C, and that's all it would go ahead and export. Or I could do D for just data. I could do the default, or I could go ahead and enable everything. So that would be A, B, C, D to completely back up my entire Nextcloud instance, including the applications I have. Now what I'm gonna do is actually go ahead and run it. So let's hit enter. And you can see now it is exporting all my applications, the database, the config, and just about everything. Now this was the instance I just installed, so there really wasn't that much data. If you have a whole bunch of things on your Nextcloud server, chances are this is gonna take a long time. Now, if you're curious to where this is actually saved, it is in the var slash snap slash nextcloud. If we go ahead and migrate over there, do an ls. There's a folder called common, so let's go ahead and cd into there. Do an ls, and then you're gonna see a folder called backup. So if we go ahead and take a look at that, you can see, if I don't capitalize it, you can see this is our backup that we just created. Now, one of the better ways to go ahead and export this and save this locally or somewhere else, just in case, is to go ahead and archive it in a tar folder. So let's go CVF, and then we can go ahead and give our new file a name. So let's just go 090221 for the date, and we'll call it nxbackup.tar. And what we're gonna want to do is point this at the proper directory. So just to save some time, we could go ahead and give this a copy paste it on over here, add the forward slash, and then add the directory, which is this. So paste that in, hit enter. It's gonna go ahead and compress and archive everything. Now if we do ls, you can see our new backup right there. Now when it comes to importing, instead of backing up, it's important to note that if you run this import command, it's gonna completely destroy any data that's currently on the Nextcloud instance. So if you're gonna import, you're gonna to want to do this on a fresh installed instance of Nextcloud. And just like backing up, you would do this pretty simple. It's just sudo nextcloud.import, and then a path to the directory in which your backup is saved. So for this example, we would just grab the directory we're currently in, backslash the actual directory where those files are stored, copy, paste, and for you, it's probably not gonna be in this location. You could put it in your home directory and point the import to there or wherever you happen to upload these files. So we could just go ahead and hit enter and it's gonna enable maintenance mode and begin overriding your current Nextcloud instance with the imported backup. Now, everything I just told you is from this page right here from the official Nextcloud how to backup snap instance guide. So this will be linked down below. So that wraps up this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I would especially like to thank our YouTube members and Patreon supporters, Mitchell Valentino, Phil Mack, Kyle, and Timo Anthony. Thank you guys so much. You are some top tier Patreon supporters. You guys are wonderful. And thank you to all the other Techie and Techie Plus members. Again, there'll be a link to a playlist so you can watch all the other Nextcloud videos, including if you need to rewatch this one down in the description. 
uh, subscribe, ring that bell so you don't not miss any future content. Have a beautiful day and goodbye.